Let's see if it starts. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please subscribe, hit the bell below to turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any episodes. Last time we installed Injector Dynamics 1050X fuel injectors. I was able to get the car started, check for fuel leaks, and everything's good to go. So today we're gonna finish upgrading the fuel system by installing a DW300 fuel pump. It's a pretty straightforward swap. You remove the rear seats, you remove the access plate, and there's a couple of hoses that you have to unplug to pull the fuel pump out of the tank. I've never done it before, so it seems straightforward. Knowing how I work on cars, it might be a little more intensive than usual, so stay tuned and let's get started. In order to gain access to the fuel pump, we first have to remove the rear seats. The seat bottoms are just bolted in with two bolts, one on each side, and that whole seat bottom comes out. Then there's a couple other bolts down here that you remove to get this seat out. Once the seat bottom is out, you can see there is a bolt right here. There is one down here in the center, and then there's another one off to the side, and that will remove the whole seat back. Now is a good time to discuss what we're gonna do with the seats. As you can see right behind me, there is the USDM stock 2.5 RS seats, and we have two options that I'm gonna discuss. There is the JDM seats, which I already have, they're in storage, so in order to get those seats, just gotta go pick them up, put them back in, and the front seats will match the rear seats, or we can do rear seat deletes, which I'm thinking more about. There is companies that do rear seat deletes, for the seats, you just have you know, like hard plastic, carbon fiber, aluminum seats in the back. So let me know what you think I should do. Now that the rear seat is removed, you can see that there is stuff in the trunk. The subwoofer will actually have to be unbolted and moved back towards the rear of the car to access the two uh, access covers uh, above the fuel pump. And you can see that I also removed the sound deadening material throughout the whole car. When I first got the car, there was some surface rust over on the driver's side, and I was a little bit worried, so I took all the carpet out, took all the seats out, and pulled up all of the sound editing material with dry ice and a screwdriver and a pick, which is not a fun experience, but um, rest assured, everything was good. All of the underneath was completely rust-free. What do you think? Tell me the truth. Too much for this car? Big old subwoofer? Could probably save about 50 or 60 pounds if I get rid of it. Uh, also, that Impreza trunk mat thing is actually surprisingly pretty heavy too. It's like 40, nah, I don't know, maybe 20 or something pounds or so. Let me know down below. Get rid of the subwoofer, get rid of the carpet, maybe save 50 pounds. Cheap and easy horsepower. All right, subwoofer is pushed out of the way, carpet's peeled up. Here's the access covers one there, one there. Start with this one, take it out. Get to the fuel pump. Access plate removed. You can actually see how dirty it is in here. And we are going to clean this all up before we start digging and opening this stuff up. We do not want any of that gunk to fall down into the fuel tank. We're also going to remove this bar here. It's brace. Um, it's a couple little 14 mil bolts just to gain more access to this fuel pump. And you don't want to be moving, sloshing around a fuel pump and trying to work around this thing. It's like literally almost right over the top of this. Now that that brace is removed, we have a lot more access to the fill pump. And you can see, I just took a few minutes and literally wiped it off with a rag, got all the dust and crud off that I possibly could because, I mean, this is invaluable. If you start dropping chunks of dirt and everything into the fill tank, it's just gonna go right through your uh, fill filter and clog it up. But I mean, this step is important. There is these ones here. This one, which is actually, I believe, a high pressure hose. So we are going to put some extra towels underneath it, above it, below the car. You are supposed to, from what I've heard, 
unplug this plug, run the car a few times, try to run it until it runs out of fuel to get the pressure and fuel out of the system so that when you disconnect this, it doesn't explode fuel everywhere. But we reached a point where we can't because the battery is dead again. I thought I fixed the problem. I thought we had everything sorted out with a bad ground. However, that is not the case. So we've got to run down to the store and get a battery before we can continue. And the nearest parts store to warranty my battery is half an hour each way. So stay tuned. Jumped in the Tacoma to go pick up a battery and a little surprise here. Hmm, check engine light. So it appears that none of the cars are working properly, but we'll work on it. We just got back from the parts store with the battery. Let's throw it in. Let's see if we can pull that plug, get the system bled so we can actually pull the pump. Fuel pump is out, so you can see this, the one that was in there. I believe it was a Walbro, and the DW right here. Um, good thing I didn't get the compact one because it would have been too small. So I just have a couple hoses to undo, plugs. You can see the the O-ring, the packing unit here. So it looks like it was a little off, and then they just went right through it with some. The studs, I don't know. So um, we're gonna order that up from Subaru. Not sure if they'll have it in stock locally, but might as well do it once since we're in here. After disassembling the sending unit to get the pump out, you can see that the DW300 comes with everything we need. We got the new O-ring. We're just gonna fit that and try to finagle this thing into the tank. Now, I didn't film much taking it out, but you just have to be really careful with this uh, float that's what measures how much fuel is left in the tank so um, it's just gotta be careful take your time you don't want to break anything there's a lot of different angles and this goes up and down uh, so you can see the fuel pump is in new fuel filter the hose clamps it's all plugged in new harness we'll give it a shot pump is in it wasn't as bad as I thought uh, this bracket got in the way a little bit but no big deal just got to hook up these last two hoses the high pressure hose and the harness and bolt it down Once everything's put back together, you're gonna to wanna to double, triple check all the connections, all the fittings, all the hoses, make sure everything's put back together properly, and then you're gonna to wanna to prime the system. So with this car, it took about 15 or 20 cycles of the key. You just wanna turn the key on so that the ignition actually engages the fuel pump. Um, it's kinda of hard to hear, but here you'll see. Just turn it on. And you'll just do that a few times, on and off. So what that's doing is that's just actually getting fuel through the system. Um, that's a good time now to check for fuel leaks before you start the car. Just keep priming it until you don't hear any more air gushing through the fuel pump. This fuel pump is actually a lot more quieter than the Walbro, which is kind of nice. Um, just keep doing that. Check for fuel pump leaks or fuel leaks from the fuel system. And then um, you'll want to start the car and then also check again for leaks after that. Let's see if it starts.
Now I need to take a quick look and see if there's any fuel leaks. That's gonna be it for today. I'm pretty happy with the progress. The fuel system is upgraded with new fuel injectors, new fuel pump, and a new fuel filter, and there's no leaks. So next time, we're gonna dive into the electrical system. We're gonna update the outdated manual boost controller, and we're also gonna update the Cobb Access 2 access port. So please, if you're new, subscribe, comment down below, and let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.